Good morning and welcome to another a little morning Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church. Uh, we just did a series on salvation and as we went through the, story, the series on salvation we kind of got to some of the big words we talked about and, and one of those words was supplication and or prayer and we kind of skipped over that a little bit so we like I said at that time it's a little deep a little long for what we was trying to accomplish there so we come on back to that and we're going to do a short series on prayer and fasting and so if you want to follow along we'll be in the Bible uh, mainly it's going to be out of Matthew chapter uh, 6 and verses 5 to 18 but uh, we'll be looking at it and I just would ask you a question to start with um, why do you pray uh, normally in a Bible study here at the church, I ask a question, I look for some response, and I know you can't respond to that, so just in your own mind, uh, why do you pray? And And uh, so we sometimes just do that, like reading the Bible. You know, we're supposed to read the Bible. And I know in our Sunday school class, uh, the Sunday school superintendent will say, uh, how many have read the Bible every day this week? And people raise their hand. And, and sometimes we know that uh, if you forget about it or you get caught up and it's the end of the day, so you grab your Bible and you read three or four verses and say, well, now I can raise my hand Sunday morning. And, and that's, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's kind of a, uh, making a shortcut that we need to read the Bible with the idea we want to learn, we want to study. So when we look about prayer, we're going to see some of the things about prayer that's that's important, uh, some of the things that's uh, needed, and, and the necessity of prayer. Uh, sometimes prayer is kind of pushed off. The prayer warriors are, you know, they're, they're important people in our congregation, those that are really have that gift, and they go to the Lord in prayer, and they just pour their hearts out, and they do the intercession and all those kind of things. So as we study this, uh, make a study on prayer, if, uh, just be mindful about prayer, and we're going to talk about fasting toward the end of it. We're going to do a series on fasting because a lot of not, a lot of people don't know much about fasting and what all it entails. But so we're going to look at supplication. Was the word that we kind of skipped over when we got into prayer, and uh, it's prayer. Supplication has the idea sometimes of uh, focusing on special needs. Uh, I'm, I'm praying for uh, someone's healing, or I'm praying for someone's job, or someone's a college, or some, something definite, you know, pretty, pretty definite and uh, specific what I'm praying for. And then uh, when we talk about prayer, there's a couple ways we can look at prayers. Uh, prayers are sometimes categorized as uh, uh, things that we would like to see happen. We pray to God that we would like to see these things happen or this happen. It's not so specific, but it's kind of more in general. And, and then the idea of prayer is that there's times for prayer. We set aside times, and we can look at that a little bit later in our study, but, you know, the, the morning time is a time for prayer. So I, I go to prayer, and a part of my prayer is supplication or intercession and, and those kind of things. So when we stop and think about prayer, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more here. Uh, over in First Timothy 2, 1, it says, I exhort thee, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving with thanks be made for all men. So Paul is writing to Timothy there, and he says, this is what once you do it, that the supplications, remember those kind of more, more special needs, and then with the prayers, the, the other things that we pray about. He said, I want you to do that, but uh, sometimes we've got to get caught up for ourselves, and he says, I want you to do that for all men. And um, one of the things he mentions in there, and we'll talk about more of this later, but uh, a giving of thanks. Uh, we're going to talk about the, the structure of a prayer and as we're going to look at an acronym here in a moment before we get into uh, Matthew. And then another thing says praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit in Ephesians 6.18. So in that Spirit there is the capital S. So it means we're praying in the, in the Holy Spirit, in the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, there's, I look at it sometimes as being, a, you know, I'm praying to the Father. I'm praying through the Son, but I'm praying in the power of the Spirit. Uh, it tells us over in Romans even that when I don't know what to pray, the Spirit utters those, makes those utterances for me that I don't know what to do and what to pray for. He prays for me. 
And then we get over to uh, Philippians 4, 6, one of my favorite verses says, Be careful for nothing but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And so we're going to uh, see right here those ideas that what we need to do and what we need to pray about. Um, so what is prayer? Um, we know that prayer is necessary. Uh, it can be a long pr prayer. Prayers are varying. You know, they can be a long prayer like Solomon prayed like 31 verses at one time. And then if you remember the story of Peter uh, when he was walking on the water, uh, that was a short, quick prayer. He said, Lord, save me. There wasn't no God in heaven or anything. He just right to the point, and that's what he needed to do. So sometimes we, we think that a long prayer is better. Uh, you know, if we pray in too short a time, well, then maybe we didn't cover all the bases or maybe we didn't do this, and people might think we're less spiritual, so we kind of flower those prayers up. But we have to remember, you know, who you're talking to. You're, you're talking to God. Hey, you might try to impress those people around, and we can talk about the Pharisees there, but, but God says, I, I, I'm looking at your heart. And so I, I know uh, a lot of times when I'm asked to pray out in the, at a, some kind of a service or celebration, and I say, ask me to pray. And that's, that's what I do, and I just focus on basically my circumstances, what's going on there, what's needed, if it's revival, if it's at a hospital, or wherever it's at. But, uh, you know, just make it to the point, make it clear, and you're praying to God, you're talking to Him, and He knows what you need, He understands it, so you just want to get to Him and let Him know that you're interceding or you're bringing it to Him, and so it's real. It's not just a, a hypocritical type of thing that we look at. So we look at those kind of prayers, how long should it be? Here's a definition for you. It may be defined as having fellowship with God. Okay, it's a fellowship. We have it's a it's a father son relationship, isn't it? We're adopted sons, adopted daughters into the family of God, and He's our Father, which we'll look at a little bit more. So it's a, but it's a fellowship. So in a fellowship, uh, how many people talk? If I'm if I'm sitting there with my my son or my daughter and that or my wife, and and we're having a time of fellowship, if one person doing all the talking, that's that's not so good. Is that's not really fellowship. That's just sharing more or less information. But the idea you need to have that two way conversation and that's a little more difficult with God isn't it because it's not an audible voice that will come out there and, and speak to you so what we need to do is we need to as we pray and as we're meditating on our prayer and that and uh, listen for God to talk to us all right he'll, he'll direct your thoughts he'll direct you to different passages in scripture especially if you're praying and, and you have your Bible open maybe you're you're reading a portion of scripture and you're praying about something for somebody for healing or whatever or salvation so we need to be not talking so much, maybe, and just sometimes just stopping and meditating a little bit on what we want and what, what we want really we want God's best, don't we? I mean, most people, when they pray to the Lord, uh, we have our wants and we have those things that we want to see happen, but we actually, we really down deep, we know God knows everything. So if we can just get ourselves to the point where we listen to Him to pray and, and to talk to us. Uh, one of the acronyms, one of those things that we hear about acronyms is ACTS, A-C-T-S, and this kind of gives you a, a basic outline. It kind of helps you to structure your prayer, and it, it does, it's good to have a, a prayer list or a prayer journal, uh, something that will help you stay focused on what you're praying about. Uh, we have a prayer list here at the church we put out for a prayer meeting, and, and it has the things, the ministries of the church, and has our missionaries that we help support, and it has a, a list of other needs, and we have those that are, are going to have babies and so forth, and those that are sick, and then those that are in need of salvation. So you, it's a pretty long list, so it's pretty hard to cover all that, but if you take just parts of those things, Maybe today you pray for 30 minutes about the missionaries or you pray about the church ministries and in your own life, uh, just pray on certain things for a while, you know, and, and just uh, focus on that and then the next day focus on something else. But if you if you put it down, I found out that if I put it down or put something in front of me that as I'm praying to kind of, not just keep staring at it, but just to re refer to now and then make sure that I'm covering what I want to be praying about for that, for that day and that time. But to have a special time. He talks about praying in secret in this portion of Scripture here, but to have that special time that you're going to talk to God, set it aside and make it a, a commitment to pray every day. And if you can't get that time, it's not that, you know, you don't have to be cut and dried, but the idea is that don't let it get put aside. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do just thank you for this day and for this time, and we thank you for the privilege the privilege we have to come before your throne and to, to come to you with our, our needs, our worries, our problems, and our thanksgivings. 
And we pray you'd be with each of us as we go through this study. Open our hearts and our minds to you that you might speak to us, that we might have a better understanding. And, uh, and, and pray in a way that's more meaningful and has more substance. We thank you again for loving us. We thank you for hearing us and what you do for us in Jesus' name. Amen.